All right, now let's talk about truss bracing. If you notice, we have blocking that goes across the trusses here. Um, originally, I thought that was what we were supposed to do. As I now learned, no, that is not how you do it. What you're supposed to have is a 2x4 on top, running the whole length of the building. Um, there's a couple issues with doing that. So, let me talk about the main one. So, the 2x4s, I already put one up here, the 20 foot 2x4. It's supposed to be 10 foot on center. So, from this wall to about here, 10 feet, there's one, 10 feet. We're at 20 feet now, which is the middle of the building. So, we're running down the middle, 10 feet over, which is about where that row blocking is. And the next 10 feet is the wall. So, we only need three two on each end, one in the middle. Now, the problem with doing that. In the middle is you can't because of what's called the bottom webs here. The webs come in, they reach the middle and run up. There's no way I can put a bottom brace with those webs there. So I'm going to have to put it on one side, meaning it's not going to be 10 foot on center. So we're going to need to run two on each side, on each side of the web. Next problem is these box trusses. Can't run a 2x4 down the middle of the building because as you see right here there's a 2x6 nailed up top so it's gonna they're probably gonna what I'm probably gonna do is run them to that and then nail them from the back side put another brace underneath of it just to make sure everything's okay and then continue the bracing along these uh, box dresses I don't know if that's really uh, how that's supposed to go but I can't find a good answer on how to do that so when you read on the internet about uh, how to brace the bottom cord for alternating trusses, the best answer you get is talk to a building engineer or the, the building engineer. And since there isn't one, that's kind of, that's kind of out there. So we're gonna brace it the best we can and hope there's no issues. That's, that's the end goal. Windy, and no surprise there. Or uh, these big holes, those actually do something. Windows go here. So we're going to go ahead and try to put a window in and see how big of a mess we make. So stay tuned. All right, much like Vanessa Williams, I went ahead and saved the best for last. Now, due to an ordering mishap, this has been an extra window left over from when that house was built. 
tried selling it on the uh, Craigslist. Nobody wanted it. So whatever. It's an expensive window. It's a nice window. It's an Anderson window. And that's what's going to my garage. Right there. Now the debate is, if I didn't have this window, would my garage have a window? And the end, probably not. There, I did. Where's that razor now? Oh, that is a lot heavier. Oh, shit. Yeah, it is. Is that it? Yeah. All right, this window, the Anderson, is a five, that way, four tall. This window that I forgot to record the installation on is the same size. However, this guy is a good 30 pounds heavier. This window came wrapped in this piece of cardboard little thing here, and then just, you know, saran wrapped, and that was it. This window obviously came in a box with padded corners and had window film that my uh, dad ripped off installed to protect the glass, unlike every other window here. It also has packing inside the window to make sure the window doesn't come off the track during shipment or installation or whatever. Top and bottom and sides. They are not messing around with their quality windows here. Until the windows are nailed in, the other windows vinyl frames are a little flexible. This is solid as a rock. It didn't sag, it didn't flex. It's, it's a much better window. However, it is double the cost, so keep that in mind. Well, we're out here making the man pad for the uh, side door. It's required later on. It's not right now, but I need to get it done because of the way our doors are. So, well, uh, this shouldn't take us very long. There. I'm not too concerned with the first inch and a half up against the concrete floor because the threshold protrudes past the door casing by probably an inch and a half. So an inch and a half of that is not going to be seen, but it will support the threshold for the door. Keep going. Well, wait a minute. Let me put one on, on my side. Come here, Aiden. No, no, at the top. He overlapped them. Where are you putting it? No, down. child he wants to he wants to ride around on me which is fine but he's at the same time trying to dig his cars into my face well yesterday yesterday evening i called the city and said hey my permit number is blah and i'm ready for a uh, framing inspection and today about four o'clock two guys showed up i don't know why two inspectors came I guess it's just what they did today. Anyway, they uh, they walked up to the uh, garage doors over there. And I said, huh, who did your framing? My dad said, well, me and my son did it. I was in the house till I was on my way down. 
They said, okay, if a contractor had done it, I would have failed you already. The reason being was that um, underlayment that we put on the roof shouldn't have been on there yet until the inspection was done. But since we're people, you wouldn't have had to let it slide. Uh, that's when I walked in and I, I explained that that was cheaper than buying a tarp to cover the whole building. So I knew we shouldn't put it up, but it was kind of a gamble. He said, yeah, it's fine. We can, we can inspect what we need to inspect from the bottom, but you're not supposed to do it. So he walked around for, I don't know, a few seconds. He saw our blocking and I said, ah, chalk line, nice. Walked around a little bit more. Said, well, guys, a little overkill, huh? I think he was referring to the bracing on the trusses perhaps maybe even the blocking that we installed that we didn't need to down there. I'm not sure. But either way, he was happy with it. Uh, he was looking at the roof some more. Now, my prediction was that they were going to look for shiners on the roof, which is exactly what he did, which is why whenever we, or I, shot in a nail and it pierced through, I removed it and reshot it. Now, that's the case for pretty much all of them, except for the tops kind of on this end down here because I just started getting lazy and just reshot him but left the nail in there. Uh, he didn't see him or didn't care, one of the two. But there are some shiners up there and sure enough, pulling out of the shiners as I went was probably a good idea because that's what he was looking for. Uh, next thing he noticed was all of the truss clips that we installed, uh, which are those little guys, not truss clips, the sheathing clips. They maintain the spacing. They're uh, cheap, quick, and easy to install. I uh, I didn't see reason not to do it. it they were pretty easy to do. A uh, box of 250 of those things is 15 bucks, so it's, it was easy. And they really liked that. They said most people around here don't even bother with it. They're just too lazy and too cheap to put them in. And if the gapping or spacing isn't correct on the sheathing, they reject them and make them rip the roof off and do it over again. He said, so using them is a great idea, and nobody does. And we did here. He was. He said he was pretty impressed by that. Uh, next thing he noticed was all of the clips that I installed up here, which are actually required. He said, "Oh, you put you actually put them in. Good. So that's a good idea." So I'm guessing a lot of people don't, or a lot of contractors don't, just because they're cheap and they know that uh, inspectors don't notice or don't catch it or don't care. But I put them in every uh, two feet as per local code. And he liked that. All the effort I put into reading the code book, studying it, not really studying it, reading it, making sure I used the correct size fastener, the correct number of fasteners, and I was doing the sheeting, again, the correct size and spacing, using a tape measure in some cases to make sure I did it right, special ordering the right size fasteners, using galvanized where needed which again is everywhere, making sure that all of my lap splices on the top walls over here were all correct, weren't going to have any issues, and everything really paid off. And he didn't look at any of that. A um, lot of effort into this place, and I'm really glad we passed. Now here's the other thing. We passed first try. When this house was built, it didn't even pass first try. They had to come back and fix a couple of things. This? My work? Pass first attempt. I don't know, the work really, really kind of paid off. I'm happy with it. Well, got a long ways to go. This was a huge step, but it was just a small little drip in the bucket. We got a long way before it's filled. So, I'm going to uh, look into air conditioning, plumbing, electrical, insulation, drywall. Um, septic, water would be nice. So we got, we got a lot to do. Oh, and a roof, stucco, and yeah, trim, painting. Ugh. All right, everybody. Going to uh, take a few days off work on this thing. I think. I think if an electrician shows up tomorrow and tells me what I need to do with the panel, then I'll get back to it. But we'll see how we'll see how it plays out. Any questions? Let me know. Thoughts, comments, concerns, and congratulations. Use that comment box and see you all later.